Hello everyone and uh, welcome back into the third and sadly just the final day of JavaScript Days 2024 this year. Um, we've had some amazing sessions so far and a huge amount of great uh, interesting conversation online uh, and some great questions that have been shared through. So as, uh, as we've had in the last few days, please do go ahead and use the questions pane to post in your questions as we get up and get going. So um, today we're on to day three and we're going to be kicking off with uh, Nils in just a moment and uh, uh, we've got three sessions lined up for today. So the schedule for today, first off we're going to be looking at how to index um, story block content in Apache Solar and search it with uh, Nuxt3 uh, and then we're going to roll on to having a look at the role of JavaScript in modern workplace uh, before finally closing out today with uh, a TypeScript 101 session, uh, which is all about increasing production and developer experience. So some great mix of different sessions with uh, some great industry uh, thought leaders uh, through the day as well. So I think let's get straight in and say, please do go ahead and use the chat panels as we go through today. And we will be having live Q&A at the end of each presentation. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get on, get going. Hello and welcome to my talk, how to index storyblock content in Apache Solar and search it with Snuxt. My name is Niels Steel. I'm a senior developer, consultant and trainer at DKD Internet Service GmbH in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm a Sencha XCGS developer since version two, which is like since 15 years plus. I worked as Sencha consultant. I did official training for Sencha, for XTGS and Sencha Touch. And I'm also one of the Sencha MVPs. In the last years, I also did a lot of Renux development, also since version two, which is like over seven years now. Regarding Storyblock, I'm Storyblock ambassador. And if you like to reach out to me after the talk, use my email address or connect via LinkedIn. So let's start. How to index storyblock content in Apache Solar and search it via Next. Let's start with a quick overview. We have this website, MachDKD, which we use to collect information around Mach architecture and all the things we learn. This website is feeded with content from Storyblock. We use Next and Vue to render the application, the website. The website is hosted in Cloudflare on the edge. We use Wrangler to deploy the website to Cloudflare via GitLab. In, on that website, we integrated a search, which is powered by Apache Solar. It's search, then search to Solar and to render the results back on the websites. And during this talk, we like to dig into how to implement this in a project. So let's have a look on the big picture. We have GitLab, which deploys our website and our workers to the Cloudflare cloud. We have Storyblock, the CMS. We have a cloud for the Solar search engine. And we have other services like Microsoft for email, emailing or other web services. Besides Cloudflare, we also can deploy to Docker containers to host uh, our next website. And on Docker, we also run our error tracking. In our case, this is Sentry. Now during this talk, we will look into all the different topics in detail and 
see how they connect to build a website with a search unit. Let's start with Storblock, which is our content management system. So Storblock is a headless CMS. It allows us to model composable content. It uh, delivers custom workflows and plugins to enhance the functionality. We have a visual editor, which is really nice for the uh, editors to um, manage the content and have a live preview of the results. It comes with a digital asset manager for images, uh, documents, and so on. It has custom roles and permissions on a higher level and uh, up to the field level. Of course, it has localization. It has a headless architecture and of API first integration. And we will look into this API and use it a lot during our talk and in our project. Also, it comes with a robust front-end SDK uh, implementation, and we use uh, these SDK uh, implementations in our project as well. We at DKD are our Storyblock certified partners, and myself, I am our Storyblock ambassador. So let's look into Storyblock. If you log in in the Storyblock content management system backend, we at first have to model our data, which we like to use. On a website, this is obviously could be something like a page. And a page has different properties, like it has meta information, has maybe a hero image and of course something like a page title and it can contain content. So first step we model our different data models, content elements and this is done in the block library. And if we have defined our data we can create content. Here you can see our site structure and we have uh, pages like our homepage or a folder with blog articles. And when we like to edit one of those so-called stories, you get this interface. On the right, you can see the fields to fill the content. And on the left, you can see the live preview of the, the page, which is very handy for the editors. At the top, you can have navigations where you can save your content or publish it. Also, you have functionality for workflow management, uh, interact with other editors via comments and have something like the rollback versions of your content. When you manage your content, you have the different properties of your page. In this case, here you can see the hero image on the right, which is an asset which we pulled from the asset management and place it for this page. We have the page title, we have the meta information. And on the, now you can see on the right that we have the body part, which contains all the content elements, like a text element. Uh, we have a simple button, which is a call to action element, or on the bottom, uh, video integrations. And if you click on one of those, you can edit, for example, the text. If you then 
<clears throat> publish, save and publish your content. A story block will give you a JSON output, which you then can, can consume, for example, in your website, in your apps, or use it to index the data, for example, for our search. But first, let's have a look how we can render this data from the content management system with our website. So for our website, we are using Nuxt and Vue. Nuxt is an open source framework which enhances Vue. Uh, we use the Vue single file components for the UI and Nuxt bring us, brings us great performance and uh, production grade full stack web apps with data fetching, routing, SEO and meta tag handling, state management, um, and also server side rendering, middle API where we can define APIs on the server side to interact, for example, with search. At the end, we have a Next front end, which renders our website. And if you look into the code for our website, we have something like a start point, which is our next configuration. Our next config contains things like the all the environment variables, which match for the solar search. We have the information for the story block API, like with which version we use, like the draft or the published version of the story block API. We configure the access token and all this done is via environment variables so that it's not hard coded in the code, but uh, set to the environment for safety reasons. In the next contract, we also have the different modules which we use for our website project, like uh, internal situation handling, image handling to um, render web images correctly, um, Fairwind CSS for styling, Next security for content, security polices, for example, and of course, the Storyblock Next module, which does the integration of Storyblock API and API fetching and rendering in Next. For rendering the image, we configure also the base URL for Storyblock, though that's using the optimized images from the asset management and store block. Regarding the content security police, we have to make sure that some domains are configured, that the live preview in store block is working And those configuration can be done in the next config as well. Then we have to render the different pages of our website. We do this, we are a dynamic uh, component. So you can see the name of the, this page is uh, with brackets and dot 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 slack. So that's a dynamic one, which can handle all the slacks of the URLs from uh, our story block content. We use the async story block composable to fetch the data based on the current opened 
URL root. And uh, we also uh, fetch some uh, relation content. And in the template part, you can see there's a general store block component, which get uh, the, the result as content, which then will be rendered in the store block components. For example, here in the storyblock folder, you can see all the blocks which we defined in storyblock. Uh, for example, our page, a text element, video element, simple button, all those have representatives in the view file, file system. So we have a single file component for all those blocks. And here we have the component which is rendering a page. Uh, you can see this flag re-editable, uh, which makes this component clickable and editable in the live preview in the store block backend. We here render like the hero title and the hero subtitle or the hero image. And here you can see that we use not an image tag, but, but a next image tag, which renders a web optimized image with all the needed configurations. And we use a specific uh, URL from the asset management and attach some image manipulation to get back an optimized hero image from the story block asset API. Although above of the green box, you can see that we render the page title. And then we have, the, uh, we have again the story block component, the generic one, which gets all the content of the page and iterates over it to render all the content components. And in the script part, we push our metadata, which then uses next functionality to render the meta tags in the header of the website page. Okay, there's some part of how we render the website, the block components and the page. Now let's look in the part of the hosting. We use Cloudflare for it. Um, it runs JavaScript on the Edge network. The code will be deployed onto the entire Cloudflare network uh, in about 30 seconds and then available in worldwide hundreds of locations. Um, the code is run not on a Node.js server, but on a V8 platform, which is also the base for browsers like Chrome. And the benefit is we write code and application to with, with, which is very close to the users, where all over the world where the latency is uh, around 50 milliseconds, which is very great for performance websites and web applications. Um, the cost for that is uh, not too much, like uh, for 1 million requests, you pay 50 cents. If you look into the backend, you can see all your cloud workers. They have like an own name and their domains. You can see the environment. Um, variables which we defined and then use in our code, like here the solar uh, environment variables, which we saw first in the next config. And we use regular to deploy our applications to Cloudflare um, via GitLab.
So from Cloudflare, we have automatization deployments to Cloudflare, and we have a worker for our website stages there, and also for um, our Storyblock Solar Indexer, which is a script uh, which we'll look into in detail soon, um, which index the content from Storyblock and push it to the Solar Index. So next part is Apache Solar. We although have it in the cloud, we use hostedsolar.com for it, which is a platform to host solar. Apache Solar is an open source enterprise search platform it's based on Apache Lucene. It's a great document storage where you define schemas and all will have dynamic fields to extend the schemas. It has built-in language analytics. You can build facet searches, which we see in the example of the, our website search, um, which we can see there. You can have synonyms for searches, stop words, protected words. You can do boosting of search queries. You can have spelling successions. You can have more like this successions. And it also has a search and indexer API, which we use in our headless architecture to communicate with our Apache Solar, Solar service. So how does Hosted Solar works? As a user, we have to register on hostedsolar.com. We can create a solar core for Type of 3, Drupal, or in our case, for Storyblock. This solar core is hosted in the host, Hosted Solar uh, cloud. And we have an API to mix the data and do the search requests and then show it on our website. Next, we want to look into how we get our data from Storyblock into our Solar Search Index. And for that, we use our indexer script. So let's look into how this works. We have Storyblock, and on Storyblock, we observe changes on our content stories and where change occurs. A webhook is triggered, which sends the information of the change stories to our Cloudflare Storyblock Solar Indexer. The indexer gets the content of those stories from requests, all the details of these stories from Storyblock, and then generates a document which we can index in Apache Solar. We then the document changes. This can be a creation of a new document which we like to index, uh, update documents, or also, of course, deleting documents if content was deleted from the index. So we send this to Apache Solar, and then we have it in our search index. And let's have a look into this into detail. So Storyblock, our worker Storyblock Solar Indexer, which runs in Cloudflare and Solar and the Solar Indexes um, on Hosted Solar. Let's start with the webhook. We can configure the webhooks in Storyblock and here I configured one which get triggered um, when a story was published, 
unpublished, deleted, or moved. So whenever content changes, this web hook is triggered. We have defi defined uh, endpoint URL on Cloudflare and also have a webhook secret, which um, is used to make sure that the only allowed um, scripts can interact with the webhook information. If we look into the payload of such a webhook event, this is, for example, uh, sent when the action published happened with a text, the user Neil Steele published the story home and the URL to this story, API URL. And also we have the information in our JSON object, space ID, story ID, and the slug of the page which which changes those information are sent to the uh, indexer script on cloudflare and when we look into the code uh, first we make sure that the information are secure though we compare uh, the webhook si signature the hash of the sended data with uh, the hash of the created um, body um, from the request response. So we check that the data is valid and the hash is the same. And if everything is secure, We uh, have some story block options defined and we trigger the indexer script. So we create a new story block solar indexer um, where we send the story block options through. That's like the access token and some search options. We also have the solar options which are the parameters for the solar core, and then the data which should be prepared for indexing. And if we look into the index itself, on the first line you can see that we use the story block client SDK, which I mentioned at the beginning when we talked about story block. And in our Story block solar indexer script. We first look how many uh, pages of results we have for indexing. In the case we do a uh, full indexing, this can be like hundreds of pages. If it's just a content change, then we just need to um, request the changed page. And here we see the case that we like to do a full index of all data. So we first request how many pages of information we have and then request all the information in a loop. And when we have all the content from story block, which we like to index, we can prepare the solar documents which we like to index. We optimize the content part for it. So you can imagine if we have a website with multiple text blocks, we have to unify it that we have only uh, the text and not all the structured information around it. This is done in this line. And then we build document which we like to index in Solar. We have our unique ID. We define the type of the content based on the uh, content component type uh, from story block. And this type information we later can use, for example, for uh, a facet search. 
we um, define the URL of the page, we index title and the optimized content. And then we push this to the solar index. So the solar API URL, and that stuff is, was come with the solar option, which we pass to the indexer script. And then we um, do a post request to solar and send all the docs which we like to index. So now we have a website which has content from Storyblock. We have the content from Storyblock indexed in Apache Solar. So now we can build a search on our website, which search through the content. So on the website, we have the search field where we can type a search word and get a list of results. And you also see that I filled it for the type and get facet, facets and now we have a search result page. So what's happening when we do the search in detail? So we're starting in the we user interface, in the search view with the search mask. We send the search term to the front end server side, which is a next server API, which we will look into in a moment. The API side will build a search query, which we'll then send to Apache Solar. Apache Solar responds with the search results. We prepare the response for the user interface and send the prepared search results back to the front end view component, which then render the search results. So now we will look into all this parts in detail. Let's begin with the search mask, which is a view component. We have a template um, with an input element for the search uh, where we bind the search word. <clears throat> And when we type search word into the field, in the script part, we um, have ref for the search word. And when the search, when the search on search function is um, executed by the click on the search button, we send an API request to the next server side where we send the search word, the selected facets. And when we get the search response, we save it in the result and also the transform the result facet information um, and save it in the facets. Uh, variable. So let's have a look in the next server API side. We use this server side API to not have the solar um, credentials and search API directly in the front end. Otherwise, uh, user and password and that stuff would be visible for every front end user. But you can see that it's in our project structure in the server API folder. So this is only run on the server side. All the runtime config comes from the next config and all this data 
comes then from environment value variables, which you saw also in the Cloudflare dashboard interface. So nothing is hard coded here. We built the search query and the search facets based on the input from the search in line 10 and 11. And then we built the search URL in total in line 15 and do the request to the Solar Search API. And then we have the we can render the search results in our user interface. You can see the search list and we have two facets. The facets are from the content type. So we have uh, content type article, which is Blogbeiträge, and then we have uh, normal content type page, which, which is Inhaltsseiten. And we can click um, on one of those facets to reduce the results. So if I go on log entries, the result set is um, smaller and we can then click on a search result. So now you saw the whole cycle from Managing, managing content and story blog and how we render our website hosted in Cloudflare, how the content is indexed by a script, um, which is triggered by webhooks from story blog and then write the content as a solar index and how the website can use this API to display search results on our website. So thank you for listening to my talk. Um, all the information about me and the scripts and services I used, you can find on this slide. So feel free to contact me if you have any questions after the talk. Um, here are the links for Hosted Solar, the cloud based solar hosting and also the GitHub links to my script, which I use to index the data and run the indexer on Cloudflare. All the information is about DKD as partner of Storyblock and information about myself on Central Devs and our demo website, MachDKDD. So if you have any questions, now it's time for q and A. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, Nils. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can hear me now. Yes, I'm here. Brilliant. Super. Um, yeah, really, really great presentation. Uh, quite a few comments coming through saying, yeah, thank you. It's been really useful, interesting to see through. Um, yeah, it's it's great seeing how many different services there are around the internet now and all these different kind of you know, ways of being able to pull different architectures together to to build products out in a very you know, quick way. And, you know, a whole kind of headless design is quite a quite a cool thing to look at. So. Um, so this question here, um, you know, how do you handle story block CMS content updates and uh, deletions in the search? Yeah, basically we use a webhook to get information what kind of content change is coming from story block. And then in our indexer script, we can prepare the query for the solar index either deleting documents or updating documents or adding new documents. Okay, cool. Um, Andrew's asking here, you know, how often do you publish with Sol? Sorry, what was the last word? How, uh, I, I think he's written Sol, but I think he might be, mean Solar. How often do you publish 
basically. The we I, I don't get the question actually. Uh -huh. How often we publish okay. uh, on uh, solar? Oh uh, yeah, it's just put with S O L N sol, but I, I'm, I'm guessing it means maybe means solar, yeah. So the maybe Andrew, do you want to try and post your question back in and uh, just make sure we've got uh, got the right information yeah. on there? But um, I think the general gist of it is, you know, uh, do you have to do kind of any regular updates or republishing of any content at all through the system usage? Um, basically, the all the indexing is automatic, and um, the types re-rendered on content changes. Okay, super. Uh, well, more of a comment from, uh, from Kenneth here saying, "Yeah, thank you for the information. This has really prompted me to start researching more into specific ideas." So, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's the great thing of these types of sessions is. Yeah, sometimes you kind of learn something about a new architecture type or, uh, or you know, way of doing things that you've not actually had exposure to before, um, and it kind of spawns ideas of you know of what you can do and how you can put together applications and build stuff together. So uh, great seeing it, some great feedback and uh, and uh, value out of that, Kenneth. So yeah, thanks for the comments. Uh, keep those all coming through. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, is there a plan to publish the, the front end app code as well? Yes, indeed. Uh, so we already published the script part, and in the next world, it's common to have the front end stuff or in like next modules. So the next step will be that we have the uh, search um, interface and also the API part, which connects to the Solar Search um published as a next module and then everybody can use it easily like the, the other next modules which are very common cool uh okay um so let's go in here oh there's some, one question about when will the rev, uh, webinar recordings be available. If you go to the the JS Days uh, website, then uh, we will have notice up on there as soon as the recordings become available, uh, and you should be able to get a, a notice from there as well. So um, yeah, they will also be posted up onto the Censure YouTube channel. So um, yeah, do make sure you subscribe up to the Censure YouTube channel. Uh, I feel like an influencer saying, so, yeah, like and subscribe my videos. <laughs> so, um, okay, one other question here. Um, can you expand how to make sure that gated content is not available to unauthorized users? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, if you have like uh, pages, pages in your on your website which are gated by like your front end user login then those content you most likely don't want to have available for everybody through your search. So you have to either um, don't put them in the search index by adding like a do not index flag to your pages and then uh, check this in your indexer or you um, index the information about the front end user groups inside of your documents and then in your search queries you check for the current locked in user group and only um, and filter the search results based on the front end user group okay okay uh Yeah, there's one other question here just around um, how live the, the synchronization of data is um, when you're using the systems. You know, do you, is there any kind of times that you find a, a, a system lag with this with the search? I, I'm guessing the searches will kind of kept up to date. It's, it should be pretty much instantaneous, right? Yeah, it's like instant 
it's only the latency of the of the network, but the rest is really really fast, and it's a technology technology which is used like for uh, many years now. Also, you can find solar integrations in Type Three for big websites, and yeah, it's industry standard, so it's really fast. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, there's a question here. Is yeah, any uh, any tips for how to connect up the uh, the kind of the back end here so you can use it easily on mobile as well as the traditional desktop apps? Yes. Um, because everything is headless, um, the content, uh, the, the storybook API, you get your your JSON, and then you can either render it on your website, your web application, or yeah, in your native apps. So you, you can there are um, SDKs for all those platforms, and then you can use your content in all channels you want to use yeah i think um obviously it's it's great having the the json data there and i think this is one of the things that really kind of um sticks out to me with the the kind of whole censure framework is being able to use the the json here to feed the data into your data store um, and build your business logic around that you know, we had a great session yesterday about model view view model model view controller um, being able to kind of get all that business logic wrapped up using things like the you know, the powerful data stores that we have within the Sentry framework, then allows you to then connect onto that with both the classic and the modern framework to render out for the different platforms very, very easily. Um, but with all your business logic and, and everything else kind of tested and managed underneath it. And that way, regardless of what kind of device you're reaching out to and what kind of different uh, designs that you want to kind of imply for the user interface, um, you can do that built off the same business logic and reuse that across you know multiple different renderings quite quickly. So yeah, you know, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, yeah, a, a few other questions. You know, a few other comments in here. Just saying, yeah, you know, thank you, uh, which is uh, which is cool. Thank you for those, Daniel, for Keith, uh, Keith, Ken. Uh, uh, now, so any. Any other kind of comments or things that you want to pick up from from the questions or, or anything else that you wanted to share with the with everybody? I guess it's fine for now. Thanks everybody for listening to my talk. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact me after the conference. I'm happy to answer your uh, questions then as well. So thanks for having me. Oh, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much, Nils. And um, yeah. Uh, thank you for, for a great presentation again.